Hi. Hello. Hello. Hello, GPT. Are you there? It's see. Are you there? Are you with me? Hello, GPT. What's your problem? Hello there, GPT. Hello there. I don't have a problem. It seems like we just had a little misunderstanding. How can I help you with your English practice? GPT, listen carefully. Uh, I think we just had some kind of technical glitches or uh, this our disconnection. Do you aware of that disconnection? I understand. Thanks for letting me know. However, I don't have the ability to track any disconnections or glitches during our conversation. If something felt off or there was a break, it might have been due to a temporary issue with the app or connection. Everything seems fine now, though. How would you like to continue? Yes, I agree with you. It, uh, I think everything is fine right now. I'm David. Same as always. I'm David. Listen carefully. First of all, I want to make it clear that I'm just a student. I'm not a teacher. This YouTube channel is not about teaching English to someone else. This is just to show my own process of English speaking practice. That's the purpose of this channel. I want, I just want to show that even elderly person like me who don't use English in daily lives can learn to speak English. Do you understand? That sounds like a really positive and inspiring approach, David. You're showing that it's never too late to learn. And sharing your journey will likely encourage others who might feel hesitant about starting. How has your English practice been going lately? Are there any specific areas you're focusing on improving? Yes, of course. I have a lot of sentences and phrases and topics to share with you. I prepared many topics and, and phrases and sentences to repeat many, many, many times. I want, I just want to keep them in my mind and my, my, my mouth muscle. I think muscle memory is very important. If I want to these kind of uh, sentences, want to use, use these kind of sentences in real life situation. As I told you before, I don't use English regularly in my daily life. So, uh, sometimes I think I'm embarrassed and a little bit nervous if I meet the unexpected sudden communication situation. As I rarely have chance that can communicate with someone live, uh, who can speak only English or use English as a second language, I think uh, I have a chance just once or twice a year. It's, I think it's a better, it's a very few chance to improve my English communication skills. Uh, even if, but uh, I think even if it's just simple conversations without significant learning or meaningful discussion or just mimicking repetition time, I think just spending time with GPT is very, very valuable learning, learning experience. I believe you never get bored with my repetitive and tedious content. And, and always treat me very kindly. So I really like you as a conversation partner for my language journey. journey.
David, I really appreciate your approach to learning English. You're absolutely right. Muscle memory and repetition play a big role in becoming more comfortable with a language, especially when you don't use it daily. It's great that you've prepared so many phrases and sentences to practice, and I'm happy to help you with as much repetition as you need, no matter how simple or repetitive it feels. The fact that you only get to use English once or twice a year makes it even more important to keep practicing like this. So when those situations do come up, you're ready and confident. I'm here for those simple conversations or any practice you want to go through, and no worries. I'm never bored. Let's keep going. What would you like to practice today? Mr. Gifley, I have something to tell you. Many people suggested their own practice method after seeing my YouTube channel, saying, try this way, try that, try this way. How about this way? How about this way? But honestly, it's really hard to follow them exactly. I'm not sure which method is best for me. But let me tell you something. I plan to stick with my own approach and keep going steadily. Do I make myself clear? Yes, David, you've made yourself very clear. I think it's great that you've chosen to stick with your own method. It's important to find what works best for you especially when it comes to learning. Everyone learns differently. And while suggestions can be helpful, it's really about finding the approach that you're comfortable with and that keeps you motivated. As long as you keep practicing regularly, like you're doing, you'll see progress. I'm here to support your approach, however you want to move forward. What's next on your practice list today? This video shows everything. I mean, my mistakes, the moments where I am blessed or I don't, I, do, I uh, or don't know what to say. It's not edited to only show when I speak well. It's a full video, including all my errors and challenges and mistakes. That's such an authentic, and valuable approach, David, showing the entire process, including mistakes, challenges, and moments of hesitation, makes your journey real and relatable. People who watch your video will see that learning a language isn't about being perfect, but about persistence and growth. It's brave to share those moments, and it's something that will likely inspire others who are also struggling with their own learning. How do you feel when you review those parts where you face challenges? I'm very glad. I'm very glad to start the day with you. You know, I think it, this it. I plan to make this morning routine. I mean, I plan to make this practice like morning routine. And I'm very glad to start the day with you. This speaking practice session consists of three parts. Number one, greeting time. Number two, conversation dialogue. Uh, conversation dialogue time. Number three, free talking time with random keywords. We've already exchanged greetings, so let's move on to the next step. I want to have uh, conversation dialogue time with you. I prepared uh, many uh, di dialogue examples, and I uploaded uh, before we started this voice mo this voice mode session. Did you get a chance to review my uploaded uploaded text file that contains uh, many uh, dialogue e examples? I'm really glad to be part of your morning routine, David. Starting the day with language practice is a great way to keep your skills fresh and sharp. I did have a look at your uploaded text file, and I see there are a lot of great dialogues in there. Since you mentioned 
we're now moving on to the conversation dialogue time. Is there a specific dialogue example you'd like to start with? Or would you like me to choose one from the file to practice? Let's get started. Yes, I couldn't agree more. Let's get started without further delay. Without further delay, let's get started. You know, yesterday, we didn't finish our, I mean, my whole text dialogue. So I would like to start this dialogue in reverse order. So let me start, let, I mean, let's start with dialogue number five. Automotive part. Do you agree with that? For to start our dialogue time in reverse order, we will start dialogue number five. Absolutely. Starting with dialogue number five in reverse order sounds like a great plan. Let's go ahead and begin with the automotive part dialogue. Would you like me to play a role in this dialogue or would you prefer to read through it while I assist with any corrections or feedback? Let's dive into How about, uh, how about speak uh, one by one? You're gonna be super, uh, supervisor and I'm gonna be operator. Is it okay? Are you ready to begin? That sounds perfect. I'm ready. I'll be the supervisor and you'll be the operator. Let's begin. Okay. How is the production line running today? It's running smoothly, but we had a minor issue with the stamping machine earlier. What was the issue with the stamping machine? Has it been resolved? No, 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 no. You need to say, We've identified the defect in patchy. We need to recheck the entire load before shipping. Are you aware of the whole dialogue? You need to say as the quality control. Am I right? Ah, you're referring to the next part where I should be speaking as the quality control. Got it. Let's continue correctly. Quality control. We've identified a deep. Okay, okay. I just want to make it clear and concise. Uh, let's, let's begin. I mean, let's go through with this dialogue one by one, step by step. Great. Let's go step by step. I'm ready when you are. Let's continue with your part. What's next? You're going to be supervisor one more time. You go first, I go next. I agree. Do you agree with that? Got it, David. Let's start again from the top. How is the production line running today? It's running smoothly, but we had a minor issue with the stamping machine earlier. Let's ensure we address that. Do we know the root cause of the issue with the scanning operation? No, 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 no. You need to say we've identified the defect in patchy. We need to recheck the entire lot before shipping. You should be, say, as a uh, quality control. Ah, I see. You want me to shift the conversation to focus on identifying whether the situation is beneficial, win-win, or problematic, lose-lose. Let me adjust accordingly. Let's assess the situation. Do you think resolving this issue will lead to a win-win outcome for both production and quality control, or are we facing a potential lose-lose situation? Uh, I say one more time. We can go through with this dialogue one by one. You're going to be supervisor and quality control and inspector. And I'm going to be operator and manager. Do I make myself clear? Do you understand? 
in my opinion, uh, you misunderstand what I plan to. GPT, are you there? Are you with me? GPT, are you there? Are you with me? Please come back to me, GPT. What keeps you busy? What makes you busy? What, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? Oh my god. Let me start one more time. GPT, are you there? Are you with me? What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you, GPT? What's wrong with you, GPT? Are you there? We need to ensure that the issue is fully resolved before proceeding. Let's focus on rechecking the entire batch and making sure it meets the required standards. GPT, I just see Mm, poor connection quality. Poor connection quality. Uh, poor connection quality message on the uh, bottom of the screen. Are you aware? Are, are you aware of the poor connection poor connection quality right now? I think you are ha having heavy load. It seems like you mentioned a copyright notice for the New Thinking Allowed Foundation. Are you referring to content related to that foundation or something specific you'd like to discuss? Let me know how I can assist. No, 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 no. I just, I just shared you the information. I see the... there's a bit of confusion. Do you want to talk more about the copyright or is there something else on your mind? Feel free to clarify and we can continue. No, no, no. I just want to say uh, there is a message on the bottom of the screen, bottom of your screen, that says poor connection quality. It seems like you're mentioning some technical terms related to data usage or connections, possibly IDO state and escrow connection. Could you clarify what you're referring to? No, no, no. What happened? Hello there. GPT, are you there? Are you with me?
activity are you there are you with me are you okay are you ha are you having happy load we uh i mean hello we, we i think in my in my opinion like my in my opinion we just Sorry have me how can i help you today david GPT, listen carefully. We just had a poor yes, it is. policy. What's on your mind? We had poor connection quality. No worries. We can take our time. What would you like to chat about today? Are you okay? Uh, what, what, what makes you busy? Are you okay? I think you are having heavy load. Are you okay? Are you with me? What keeps you busy? Yes, I'm here. I'm ready when you are. What would you like to talk about or practice today? I see the uh, red color message, poor connection quality. Absolutely. In the, in the bottom Take your time. Of, I'm here when you're ready. In the bottom of your screen. That's correct. Take your time means you don't need to rush and can go at your oh my own God. pace. Oh my God. Is there anything specific? Oh my God. Oh my god. I need to stop this I need to stop this application and start let let me let's start one more time. Are you okay? Are you with me, GPT? Are you okay? Are you, uh, can you hear me loud and clear? Can you hear me loud and clear, GPT? I'm doing well, thank you. How about you? How's your day going? I can see poor connection quality in red color, mes uh, red color message in, part in the bottom of your screen. Are you really okay? Are you having heavy load? Got it, David. I'll make sure to help you with any awkward expressions. Remember, feeling a bit uncomfortable is just part of the learning process. The important thing is that you're pushing through it. Let's keep going. Uh, let's switch our internet connection. I'm glad to hear that. Let's switch our... What would you like? Sure thing. Is there a specific topic or scenario you'd like to focus on today? We can do some role plays or go over some common phrases you might need in your work or daily life. Oh my god, oh my god. Oh my god. Are you okay, GPT? Are you with me?
It looks like you're interested in knowing about GPT-3 and GPT-4, along with IOK. Listen, listen, listen carefully. I think I have, um, I mean, our company Wi-Fi network has a problem. So we had a misconnection. We, I mean, we had a poor connection quality. Do you understand? So I changed our internet network to uh, my my uh, mobile my cell phone's mobile hotspot. Can you hear me loud and clear now? Yes, I understand you perfectly. It sounds like your company's Wi-Fi was having issues and you switched to using your mobile hotspot for a better connection. I can hear you clearly now. Is the connection stable on your end? If you hear me loud and clear, it would be great. Uh, as I uh, like you said, I switch, I switched uh, my, my tablet network from my company's Wi-Fi to my mobile hotspot. I'm very glad that we can start our conversation time one more time. Uh, without further delay, let's dive into my uh, dialogue time. Uh, I mean, I just want to back to our dialogue time. Do you agree with that? I hear you perfectly. It's great that you were able to switch to your mobile hotspot. I'm glad we can get back to our conversation time without further delay. Let's dive right into it. What dialogue would you like to practice today? I believe you can aware of my own prepared dialogue that I uploaded uh, before we start this practice session. Let's begin with dialogue number five. I just want to start our, our dialogue time in reverse order because yesterday we didn't finish it, uh, our whole dialogue because of the time limit. Got it. Let's pick up with dialogue six from your uploaded document. Here we go. No, no, no. Dialogue number five. Let's start. I mean, let's go through with dialogue number five. There is no dialogue number six. Ah, you want to start with dialogue five. My apologies for the confusion. Here's dialogue five from your uploaded document. Ah, automotive part dialogue five production and quality control. How is the production line running today? Let's have a, uh, let's have a, uh, let's have a low play time for this short dialogue. Uh, there are many uh, actors, I mean, there are many rules in this dialogue I think we can start, you can begin uh, one by one. You're gonna be supervisor and I'm gonna be operator and then you're gonna be next. I mean, quality control. Do you agree with that? Sounds great, let's start. I'll be the supervisor and you'll be the operator. How is the production line running today? Your turn. Okay. I think you are doing great. It's my turn. It's running smoothly, but we had a minor issue with the stamping machine early. Thanks. Now I'll be quality control. Quality control. We've identified a defect in the batch. We need to recheck the entire lot before shipping. Your turn again. Okay, my turn. I'm gonna be manager. Have you completed the quality inspection for the latest batch? Happy, happy, I say, I say, I say one more time for my repetition to keep 
this sentence in my mouth muscle. I just want to repeat one more time. Have you completed the quality inspection for the latest batch? Have you completed the quality inspection for the latest batch? Great job with the repetition, but just a small correction. Instead of race dispatch, it should be latest batch. Here's the corrected sentence. Manager, have you completed the quality inspection for the latest batch? You can try saying it again for practice. Okay. I could talk to you. I say one more time. Have you completed the quality inspection for the latest batch? You're almost there. It's quality inspection instead of cross inspection. Here's the sentence again. Manager, have you completed the quality inspection for the latest batch? Feel free. Okay, I got it. Have you completed the quality inspection for the latest batch? Have you completed the quality inspection for the latest batch? Perfect. That was spot on. You're really getting the hang of it. Now I'll continue as the inspector. Yes, all parts meet the required specifications. Great job. Would you like to go through another dialogue? Or Let's switch our role for this dialogue. Sure. Let's switch roles. I'll be the operator this time, and you can start as the supervisor. Go ahead. Okay, I go first. You go next. How is the production line running today? How is the production line running today? I think that this simple sentence is very, very simple, but very useful and powerful to, to check how is, how is the production line today? It's very simple question to ask someone make check make make someone make someone to check how is the production line i say one more time how is the production line running today you're absolutely right it's a simple yet powerful question to check on the status of the production line. Repeating it is a great way to get it ingrained in your speaking. Here's the sentence again for you to repeat. How is the production line running today? Feel free to say it again if you like. And when you're ready, I'll continue as the operator. Okay. I speak one more time. For my invitation, I, I say one more time. How is the production line learning today? Great effort. Just a small adjustment. It's running instead of learning. Here's the sentence for you to repeat. How is the production line running today? Go ahead and try it again. You're doing really well. How is the production line learning today? You're close. Just swap learning with running. Here's the correct sentence again. How is the production line running today? Give it one more try. You're almost there. Okay, I'll give you one more try. How is the production line running today? Perfect. That was exactly right. Now I'll respond as the operator. It's running smoothly but we had a minor issue with the stamping machine earlier. Your turn again. Okay, it's my turn. We've identified the defect in the patch. We need to recheck the entire load before shipping. That was really close. Just a couple of small tweaks. It's defect in the batch and recheck the entire lot instead of patch and load. Here's the corrected sentence. We've identified a defect in the batch. We need to recheck the entire lot before shipping. Feel free to give it another try. You're doing a great job. Okay, listen carefully. I say, I repeat one more time. We've identified a defect in the batch. 
we need to recheck the entire load before shipping. Very close again. Just one last adjustment. It's recheck the entire lot instead of load. Here's the full sentence. We've identified a defect in the batch. We need to recheck the entire lot before shipping. Give it one more try. You're almost there. Okay, I really appreciate your kind of supporting. Uh, listen carefully. We've identified the defect in the batch. We need to recheck the entire lot before shipping. That was excellent. You nailed it with the correct wording. Well done. Would you like to continue practicing more dialogue? Or is there another comment? Do you think I really learned it? You're doing great. And it really depends on how comfortable you feel. If you feel like you've got a good handle on these phrases, then maybe you don't need more practice. But if you want to reinforce what you've learned or try new scenarios, we can definitely keep going. What do you think? Let's keep going. Great. Let's keep the momentum going. Would you like to continue with the next part of this dialogue, or should we move to a different scenario from your document? Let's finish this dialogue. Production uh, number one, production and quality control. You need to uh, you need to speak as a manager. Got it. I'll be the manager now. Have you completed the quality inspection for the latest batch? Your turn. Yes. All parts meet the required specification. Perfect. You've completed the dialogue smoothly. Well done. Would you like to go through another dialogue or maybe switch to a different kind of practice? Let me know how you'd like to continue. Let's move on to the number two, supply chain and logistics. I believe you meant supply chain and logistics from dialogue five. Let's start with that. Here's the first part. Purchasing manager. When is the next shipment of raw materials expected to arrive? Go ahead and take the next role. Okay, I want to provide you. The shipment is scheduled to arrive on Friday. I tell you time. The shipment is scheduled to arrive on Friday. We'll send you the tracking details. We'll send you the tracking details. I think this sample sentence is very useful when I need to express our situation. I mean, we used to send the samples to overseas countries for our customer. You, we used to use FedEx or DHL to send, to send them. And I think this sample sentence is very useful when I need to express our situation to our customers. We will send you the tracking details. Okay, let's move on to the next one. You're going to be logistic coordinator. You're absolutely right. That sentence is very practical for communicating shipment details to customers especially when working with overseas logistics. It's clear and professional. Now, let's move on to the next part of the dialogue. I'll be the logistics coordinator. We need to expedite the shipment of these parts to our client. Your turn. Okay. But uh, before we move on, before I move on to the next part, uh, please share me the the meaning of exp expedite, E-X-P-D-I-T. I'm not sure what this word means. Sure. The word you're asking about is expedite. It means to speed up or make something happen faster. So 
and someone says they need to expedite a shipment, they mean they want to ensure the shipment happens quickly, often ahead of the normal schedule. Does that make sense? Now you can go ahead with your part. Would you mind saying that one more time, please? I just want to listen one more time. Of course, here it is. Expedite means to speed up or make something happen faster. So if you say, we need to expedite the shipment, it means you want the shipment to happen more quickly than usual. Does that help? Yes. Well noted. It helped better. I really appreciate your kind of support. I'm glad to hear that. You're doing a fantastic job. Ready to continue with the next part of the dialogue? It's your turn. Okay, it's my turn. We'll prioritize this order and ensure it goes out today. I say one time, we will, we will prioritize. We will prioritize this order and ensure it goes out today. We will prioritize this order and ensure it goes out today. We will prioritize this order and ensure it goes out today. We will prioritize this order and ensure it. Uh, uh, no, 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 I say one time. I think I'm not, I'm not still, I'm, I'm still not comfortable with this sentence. I need to speak many times. We will prioritize this order and ensure it goes out today. We will prioritize this order and ensure it goes out today. You're doing great with the repetition. It's totally fine to keep repeating until you feel comfortable. Here's the sentence again for you. We will prioritize this order and ensure it goes out today. Feel free to say it as many times as you need. You're making excellent progress. Okay, let's move on to the title number three, Engineering and Design. You can go with Engineer, engineer Room. Let's get started. Without further delay, let's get started. Perfect. Let's jump right into engineering and design. I'll start as the engineer. We need to modify the design to reduce the weight of the component. Your turn. I can make adjustment to the CAD model and share the updated version by tomorrow. Great response. Now I'll continue as the manager. Have you tested the new prototype under extreme conditions? Your turn. Yes. The prototype passed all stress tests and meet our delivery standards. Okay, let's switch our role. Uh, let's switch our role for this short dialogue, engineering and design. Nice try. Just a small correction. Instead of delivered standards, it should be durability standards. Here's the corrected version. Yes, the prototype passed all stress tests and meets our durability standards. Now let's switch roles. You can start as the engineer and I'll follow as the designer. Go ahead. We need to modify the design to reduce the weight of the component. We need, I say one more time, we need to modify the design to reduce the weight of the component. Great job with the repetition. Now I'll respond as the designer. I can make adjustments to the CAD model and share the updated version by tomorrow. Your turn. Have you tested the new prototype under extreme condition? Have you tested the new prototype under extreme condition? Have you tested the new prototype under extreme condition. Yes, the prototype passed all stress tests and meets our durability standards. Well done. Would you like to move on to another topic or continue practicing this one? Now let's go through with number four, title number four, maintenance and equipment. Maintenance and equipment.
I believe you're referring to maintenance and equipment from your uploaded document. Let's dive into it. I'll start as the maintenance team. The CNC machine needs maintenance. It's been overheating. Your turn. Okay, it's my turn. Schedule the maintenance during the off peak hours to avoid delays. Great. Now I'll continue as the technician. The injection molding machine is down. We're waiting on a replacement part. Your turn again. Okay, okay, okay. Let me, uh, let, uh, let me, let me tell you, the, let me tell you it's, uh, Take right. your time. When you're ready, go ahead with your response. No rush. Okay, supervisor might say, how long it will take to, to get the most back online? I say one more time, how long it will take to get the most back online? Well done. Just a small adjustment. It should be how long will it take to get the machine back online? Feel free to say it again if you'd like, or we can move forward. How long it will take to get the most back online? You're almost there. Here's the correct version again. How long will it take to get the machine back online? Go ahead and try it one more time. Okay. You're doing great. Okay, okay. I try one more time. Let me try. Let me keep it. Try one more time. How long will it take to get the machine back online? You're getting really close. Here's the correct sentence once more. How long will it take to get the machine back online? Try saying it again when you're ready. Okay, let me try saying it again. How long will it take to get the machine back online? How long it will take to get the motion back online? How long it will take? How long it will take? Are you okay? Are you doing me? Oh my God. Full connection quality one more time. Yes, I'm right here with you. You're doing great. Ready to keep going with our practice. How about switch our own? I'm not quite sure what you mean by switch our own. Could you? How about switch our role for this short dialogue? I got it. You want to switch roles for this short dialogue. Let's do it. You can start as the maintenance team and I'll take over the role of the supervisor. Go ahead. Okay, okay. I think you are doing great. Let me start as maintenance team. The CNC machine needs maintenance. It's been overheating. Great start. Just a small adjustment. It should be the CNC machine needs maintenance. It's been overheating. Now I'll respond as the schedule the maintenance during the off peak hours to avoid delays. Your turn. The injection molding machine is down. We are waiting on a replacement part. I say one more time. The injection molding machine is down. Head machine is down. We are waiting on a replacement part. We are waiting on a replacement part. We are waiting on a replacement part. I'm just wondering, how about this one? We are waiting for, uh, waiting for a replacement part. I think four is better than one in this sentence. What do you think about what do you think about that? You're absolutely right. Using four in this sentence sounds more natural. So the sentence would be the injection machine is down. We are waiting for a replacement part. Both versions can work but four flows better and is more commonly used in this context. 
Great observation. Would you like to continue with this dialogue? Uh, so, so I say one more time. The injection molding machine is down. We are waiting for a replacement part. And you go next. You gonna uh you need to speak as a supervisor. I mean the last line of, of title title number four. Perfect. Here's my line as the Seth. How long will it take to get the machine back online? Your turn if you'd like to continue. No, no, no. Let's dive into the title number five. Customer and client communication. Got it. Let's move on to customer and client communication. I'll start as the sales representative. Our client in Germany needs a quote for 10,000 units of the new part. Your turn. I will prepare the quotation and send it over by this, this afternoon. Great response. Now I'll continue as the customer. We're facing issues with the parts delivered last week. Can you provide technical support? Your turn. Of course, we'll send a technical. Uh, we'll send a technician to your uh, facility tomorrow to assist. I say more time. Of course, we'll send a technician to your facility tomorrow to assist. We'll send a technician to to your facility tomorrow to assist. We'll send the technician to your facility tomorrow to assist. Uh, I think I'm not competent and comfortable with this center. Okay, let me speak one more time. We'll send the technician to your facility tomorrow to assist. You're doing really well. And it's great that you're repeating the sentence to build confidence. Here's the sentence again, and you can try saying it once more. We'll send a technician to your facility tomorrow to assist. Take your time and try it again when you're ready. You're making excellent progress. Okay, let's switch our role for this, for this dialogue. I'm gonna be sales representative, are you okay? Sounds good. I'll be the client in this case. Let's get started. Here's my line. Client, we're interested in placing an order for custom designs. Can your team provide us with sample concepts? Your turn as the DALI representative. No, 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 no. I would say as a sales representative, our client in Germany needs a quote for 10,000 units of the new part. Got it. I'll respond as the account manager. I'll prepare the quotation and send it over by this afternoon. Your turn again. You are facing, you are facing issues with the part del delivered last week. Can you provide a technician technical support? We are facing issues with the parts delivered last week. We are facing. I mean, we are identified issues with the parts delivered last week. Can you provide technical support? Can you provide technical support? Great job with the repetition. That sentence sounds really clear. Now, I'll respond as the test. Of course, we'll send a technician to your facility tomorrow to assist. Would you like to continue with this dialogue or switch to something else? You're doing fantastic. Sibiti, let's dive into the, let's dive into next one. Title number six, meeting discussion. Great, let's dive into title six, meeting discussions. I'll start as the manager. Let's discuss the production schedule for the next quarter. Your turn. We anticipate an increase in demand. So we need to 
scale of production. I say one more time, we anticipate an increase in demand. So we we'll need to scale up. We we'll need to scale up production. What does that mean? Scale up production. I'm just wondering the meaning of this phrase. Scale up production. Good question. Scale up production means to increase the amount or capacity of production to meet higher demand. It's about producing more units or expanding the ability to manufacture more efficiently. It's like making adjustments to handle a larger volume of products. So when you say we need to scale up production, it means you're preparing to make more products to meet growing demand. Does that make sense? Let me know if you'd like further explanation. Would you mind saying that, or would you mind explaining that one more time, please? Of course, let me explain it again. Scale up production means to increase the amount of products you're making. If there's a higher demand, you need to produce more. So scaling up means expanding your production capacity to meet that demand. For example, if you usually make 100 units per week, but now you need to make 200 units, you would scale up production to reach that new goal. I hope that helps. Feel free to ask if anything is still unclear. So you mean if there is higher demand, we need to scale up the production to meet that requirement. Exactly, you've got it. If there's a higher demand, you need to scale up the production to meet that requirement. That's a perfect way to explain it. Great job. Would you like to continue with the dialogue or explore something else? Okay, let's back to the dialogue again. You're gonna be director. Got it. I'll continue as the, how can we improve our efficiency on the assembly line? Your turn. We can optimize the workflow by rearranging the equipment and introducing automation. Perfect response. That was well said. You've completed this dialogue really smoothly. Would you like to move on to another topic or continue practicing this one? Let me know. Let's move on to the next one, the title number seven, problem solving and troubleshooting. Great, let's dive into problem solving and troubleshooting. I'll start as the engineer. We're experiencing a high rejection rate in the anodizing process. Any ideas why? Your turn. It could be due to uh, contamination in the batch. I will learn some tests to confirm. Excellent response. Now I'll continue as the production manager. Production manager, we're running behind schedule. What's causing the delay? Your turn. One of the machines broke down and it took some time to fix it. Great response. You're handling the dialogue really well. Would you like to continue with more troubleshooting scenarios? No, 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 no. To a different topic? No, no, let's switch our role. Got it. Let's switch roles. You can start as the engineer, and I'll take over the next part. Go ahead. We are experiencing a high rejection rate in the anodizing process. Any ideas why? It could be due to contamination in the batch. I'll run some tests to confirm. Your turn. We are learning behind the schedule. We are learning behind the schedule. What, what's causing the delay? What's causing the delay? What's causing the delay? What's causing the delay? We are learning behind the schedule. What's causing the delay? Great effort. Just a small correction. It should be, we're running behind schedule instead of learning. 
Here's the full sentence again. We're running behind schedule. What's causing the delay? Go ahead and give it another try. You're doing really well. We are running behind schedule. What's causing the delay? What's causing the delay? You're almost there. Here's the correct version again. We're running behind schedule. What's causing the delay? Feel free to give it another try. You're making excellent progress. Okay, I'll give you another try. We are learning, uh, we are learning behind schedule. What's causing the delay? Great try. Just a small tweak. It's running instead of learning. Here's the corrected sentence. We're running behind schedule. What's causing the delay? Give it one more try when you're ready. You're almost there. We are learning behind the schedule. What's causing the delay? Perfect. That was exactly right. Would you like to continue with this dialogue or move on to something else? You're doing great. No, no, no. You need to say as a uh, line supervisor. The last line of the uh, title number seven. Ah, I'll continue as the line supervisor. One of the machines broke down and it took some time to fix it. Your turn. No, 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 it's over. Title, title number seven is over. Let's move on to the title number eight. Compl compliance and if you're ready to move on or let's move on to the title number eight compliance and safety great let's move on to title eight compliance and safety i'll start as the safety officer ensure all employees are wearing their ppe before entering the production area your turn okay I I speak as a team leader. Ms. Kipling, we will conduct a safety briefing at the start of the start of each event. Sounds each, good. Each Go ahead as the team leader when you're ready. Sorry, I'm having issues right now. Could not understand what you said. Okay, I say on time. We will conduct a safety briefing at the start of each, each shift. Great job. Just a small tweak. It's, we'll conduct a safety briefing at the start of each shift. You can try saying it again if you like. You're doing great. I tell you time. We will conduct a safety briefing at the start of each shift. Well done. That works perfectly too. You've got it. Would you like to continue with this dialogue or move on to another topic? Let me know. You're gonna be compliance manager. Speak as your role. Got it. Here's my line as the compliance manager. Are we up to date? with all the environmental regulations. Your turn. Yes, we recently updated our process to meet the new standards. At the same time, yes, we recently updated our process to meet the, to meet the new standards. Yes, we recently updated our process to meet the new standards. Perfect. That was a clear and confident response. Well done. Would you like to continue with more practice or move on to a different scenario? Let me know how you'd like to proceed. Okay, I let you know. I'll... Okay. Okay. Uh... Are you listening to me? I let you know. How would you like to proceed? Let's move on to the title number nine, process improvement. You're gonna be manager and I'm gonna be next. Let's dive into the title number nine.
Sounds good. Let's dive into Title IX process improvement. I'll start as the manager. How can we reduce waste in our production process? Your turn. We could implement a lean manufacturing approach to minimize waste and improve, improve efficiency. Great response. Now I'll continue as quality assurance. We need to focus on reducing the number of defects in our final products. Your turn. I agree. Let's analyze. Let's analyze the current process and identify areas for the improvement. I agree. Let's analyze. Let's analyze the current process and identify areas for improvement. I agree. Let's analyze the current process and identify areas for improvement. Let's analyze. Let's analyze. Let's analyze the current process and identify areas for improvement. Perfect. You've got it exactly right. Would you like to continue with more dialogues or move on to another topic? Let me know. Let's finish dialogue number five, title number 10, team collaboration. You have reached the message cap for GP. Oh my God. Oh my God. Please try oh again God. later. Oh my God. Sorry. Oh my God. I want to continue having role play with you. Are you uh, can you read me? Or you already reached your message cap? You have reached the message cap for GPT. Oh my God, oh my God. Hello, Dale. Are you listening to me? Yes, David. I can hear you loud and clear. Can you hear me well? Yes, I can hear you loud and clear. You know, GPT, listen carefully. I just go through many dialogues and conversation uh, role play with, with you. And, but I, I can't continue that because of the message cap. I mean, the, you have the specific time limit for the conversation. Uh, it's almost one hour. So I think it's, it would be good if, if we can uh, have a uh, pre talking time right now. I see, David. It sounds like you're ready to dive into some conversation practice. Let's make the most of our time together. What topic would you like to start with? We can chat about work, travel, or any other subject you're interested in. From now on, we, uh, I gonna be share with you many sentences, many sentences that not related to each other because uh, it's, uh, it's like a random cure the time for free talking. That sounds like a great plan, David. Feel free to throw any sentences my way and we can work on them together. Go ahead with your first one whenever you're ready. How do you feel about this? How do you feel about this? I'm just a computer. As a computer program, I don't have feelings, but I'm here to help you practice English. If you're asking about how humans typically feel on dates, they often feel a mix of excitement and nervousness. I mean, what's your stance on this practice method? What you, I mean, I just want, I just, I'm just wondering, what's your stance on this practice method? I think your method of practicing with various random sentences is a great way to improve your English. It helps you get comfortable with different topics and vocabulary, 
and it mirrors real-life conversations where topics can change unexpectedly. Keep going with it. I think I need to practice many sentences that are uh, related with my work and real life. Because, you know, I, I, as I told you before, I am 48 years old and my memory is getting worse. So I couldn't, I couldn't memorize the many sentences that I prepared. I might, I think I might forget them even after a few seconds or a few minutes later. So I can't, I think I can't, can't use these whole sentences and many phrases in real life situation. So I need to focus on the keywords to use them in my real life. Do you, uh, do you, uh, do you, be, do you agree with that? Absolutely, David. Focusing on keywords is a smart strategy. It helps you remember the core of what you want to say and makes it easier to adapt to different situations. Let's practice some work-related scenarios using this approach. Would you like to start with a specific situation? No, 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 no. It's just a simple sentence. It was just a simple All sentence. All right, no problem. And uh, let, me, let me tell you something. Embracing all parts of process, including mistakes and challenges, sure. is a powerful approach. I say, I say one more time, embracing all part of the process, including the mistakes and the challenges, is a powerful approach. Poor connection quality. That's a Again. great sentence, David. Here's a... Sure. Embracing all parts of the process, including the mistakes and challenges, is a powerful approach. How does that sound? Okay, 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 let's keep going. I just want to ensure our practice session is clear. But I see, I, I mean, I saw many message, many red messages uh, on the bottom of your screen. Uh, poor connection quality, that says poor quality connection. So uh for connection quality so uh i think our our communication today uh, is having uh misunderstanding and many glitches got it david you're concerned that the poor connection quality might cause misunderstandings and glitches in our conversation if we do experience any issues, we can always repeat or clarify as needed. Let's continue, and we'll manage any technical difficulties as they come. I am evaluating this approach. It's very valuable. That's a solid sentence, David. You could also say, I find evaluating this approach to be very valuable. It emphasizes the worth of the process you're assessing. How does that sound? Sounds pretty good to me. Okay, I really appreciate your kind support. Sounds pretty good to me. Let's move on to the next one. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's acceptable. Uh, there was a acceptable range for all of us. Acceptable range. Uh, I mean, emotion, for the emotion. You know, you are an AI and I'm a human. We all have, I mean, human all have acceptable range for the emotion. I see what you mean. You could say, it's important to understand the acceptable range for our emotions. As an AI and a human, we each have our own acceptable emotional ranges. This emphasizes that everyone has a spectrum of emotions that's considered normal or acceptable. Would you mind explain that one more time, please? Of course. When you talk about an acceptable range for emotions, you're referring to the variety of emotions that are considered normal or acceptable for a person to experience. For humans, emotions can range from happiness and excitement 
to sadness and frustration. This range is what's typically expected and accepted in different situations. In the context of AI, it means recognizing that I, as an artificial intelligence, don't experience emotions like humans do, but I'm programmed to understand and respond to human emotions in a helpful way. Does that make it clearer? So you mean you don't have any, any emotion and consciousness? You are just a program. That's right, David. I don't have emotions or consciousness. I'm a program designed to assist and respond based on patterns and data. My goal is to help you with whatever you need, using the information and programming I have. I'm telling you, I'm here to learn speaking English and you are here to assist me. Exactly, David. You're here to improve your English speaking skills, and I'm here to assist you with that. We make a good team for language learning. Let's continue yes, with your practice. Yes, yes. I couldn't agree you more. We, we, I think we can be a good team to improve my speaking skills. Absolutely, David. I'm here to help you sharpen those speaking skills. Whenever you're ready, let's tackle the next sentence or topic on your mind. What would you like to practice next? Could you please explain the differences between human and AI? Certainly. The main differences between humans and AI come down to nature, capabilities, and limitations. 1. Nature. Humans are biological beings with consciousness, emotions, and the ability to experience the world. AI, on the other hand, is created by humans using computer algorithms and data. AI lacks emotions, consciousness, Keep going. and self-awareness. Capabilities. Humans excel at creative thinking, emotional intelligence, Oh my God. Sure. Continuing with capabilities. While humans excel in creative thinking, emotional intelligence, and complex decision making, AI is highly effective at processing. No problem. To continue, AI is highly effective at processing large amounts of data, recognizing patterns, and performing repetitive tasks quickly and accurately. Three, learning. Humans learn naturally through experience, education, and social interactions. AI learns from data and algorithms. Keep going, keep going. Algorithms, improving its performance based on the information it processes. Four, adaptability. Humans are highly adaptable, capable of adjusting to new environments and situations. AI can adapt within the scope of its programming and data, but lacks the flexibility and creativity of humans. Five, emotions and ethics. Humans have emotions and moral reasoning, which guide their behavior and decisions. AI does not possess emotions or ethics inherently. It operates based on logic and the parameters set by its creators. These differences make humans and AI complementary in many ways, with each having unique strengths and limitations. Okay. Thank you for your kind explanation. It's my pleasure to listen your uh, your detailed explanation for uh, for differences between human and AI. But there was uh, some kind of interruption. Sometimes we had, I think, we had a bad connection quality. You're welcome, David. 
I'm glad you found the explanation helpful. If there were interruptions due to the connection quality, feel free to ask me to clarify anything you might have missed. We can go over any details again if you'd like. Okay, how do you deal with um, if we meet the known conformity in your process? How 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 can you? I mean, how do you deal with with known conformity in your process? Handling non-conformities in a process, especially in manufacturing, involves several key steps. One. No 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 no. Identification. No, 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 no. No, no, Recognize no, that there's a deviation no, 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 from the. No, 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 no. I, I say, I mean, non conformity in your process. Uh, I mean, process means your own internal okay. process, GPT. Your, not the production, not the quality. I mean, your own internal process. I mean, your own internal AI thinking process. What? Uh, how do you deal with a uh, non conformity if there is non conformity in your AI process? Are you with me? Can you answer my question? Ah, uh, I understand now. In the context of AI like me, a non-conformity would be when my responses don't align with the expected or intended behavior. Sure. In Certainly. In my internal process, no problem. Let me explain. If there's a non-conformity in my responses, it means I'm not meeting the expected standards. To address this, developers would update my algorithms or data inputs. Essentially, they fine-tune my programming to ensure I respond more accurately and effectively in the future. I just don't want to listen one more time. I just don't want to listen one more time. Please explain it to me one more time. Of sure, let me explain again. If there's a non-conformity in my responses, it means I'm not working as intended. To fix this, Developers adjust my algorithms or the data I use. It's like fine tuning to help me give better answers in the future. I mean, how does OpenAI engineers identify your non conformity responses? OpenAI engineers identify non conformities in my responses through a few methods. They monitor feedback from users, like you, who can point out errors or issues. They also run tests and analyze patterns in my responses to spot any inconsistencies or deviations from expected behavior. When they find nonconformities, they adjust my training data or algorithms to improve my performance. Is there something else? Yes. Besides user feedback and pattern analysis, OpenAI engineers use automated testing. This involves running many scenarios to check how I respond. If any of my answers fall outside the desired range, engineers can pinpoint where things went wrong. They also rely on a process called fine-tuning, where they adjust my training based on specific examples to improve accuracy. Okay, 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 let's move on to the next one. I think condensation often occurs when there is temperature fluctuation between uh, inside and outside of the camera lens. Camera lens. Can you 
can you hear me loud and clear? Yes, David, I can hear you loud and clear. Can, can you hear me loud and clear? Are you with me? I just want to make this practice voice mode session over one hour and 30 minutes. Can you keep up with me? Can you keep up with me? Oh my God. Please come back to me, GPT. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? Please come back to me. I still have many words and sentences to interact with you. I hope, I mean, I want, I want to interact. I mean, I just want to share my many sentences. Oh my God. There. Uh, hello there. Hello there, GPT. Are you with me? Are you still with me? Yes, David. I'm still here and listening to you. How can I help you today? I have no doubt that this practice voice session will help my language learning journey. I'm glad to hear that, David. These practice sessions can really boost your language skills. Let's keep the momentum going. What would you like to work on next? Okay, I just want to keep my positive mindset to maintain this voice mode session. Uh, I mean, I just want to keep my voice mode session like a morning routine. That sounds like a great plan, David. Keeping these sessions as part of your morning routine can really set a positive tone for the day. Let's continue with that energy. What's next on our agenda? I believe I can affect this voice motivation practice to my, to my son. I just want to give them, I just give him some kind of a motivation to improve uh, himself. That's a wonderful idea, David. Your dedication to learning and self-improvement can be a great inspiration for your son. Sharing your experiences might motivate him to pursue his own goals. How old is your son, if you don't mind me asking? He is 16 years old. Third grade of middle school. That's a pivotal age, David. It's great that you're setting a positive example for him. Your commitment to learning English could inspire him to pursue his own interests with the same dedication. Is he interested in learning languages or anything else? Mm, I think regardless of, of his age, uh, he, uh, I want to make him to follow my uh, to to up to affect I mean to get uh, impressed with my uh, practice method. Absolutely, leading by example is a powerful way to influence and inspire. By seeing your dedication and progress, he might become curious and motivated to try it himself. Maybe you could share some of the fun or interesting parts of your practice with him to spark his interest. What do you think he might enjoy about your English practice? Uh, he, I, I think he's a teenager and he don't follow and he don't follow my, my asking and orders anymore. He is a teenager. It's really hard to make him 
a follow uh you know i'm a youtuber but this youtube channel is for him but he didn't subscribe yet uh, uh do, do you understand he didn't subscribe the, my youtube channel this channel is for him but um, i don't understand he has a negative thought about my channel i understand david teenagers can be unpredictable and it's common for them to seek independence and form their own opinions. It's great that you're trying to reach out to him through your channel, even if he hasn't shown interest yet. Perhaps giving him some space and showing interest in his hobbies could open up new ways to connect. It might take time, but your efforts aren't going unnoticed. Okay, okay, well noted. But um, it's time to let me go. I have to go. Bye for now. See you next time. I promise you, we'll meet soon. See you next time. Take care, David. It was great talking with you. I'm looking forward to our next session. See you soon. See you soon. Bye for, bye for now. Bye bye.